And the kid's in the hospital. You know, a kid in the hospital, now that's sad. You can't go out and play baseball. Some of them, can't even go to a baseball game. Or a kid in the orphanage. Feel like there's no one in the whole world that cares about them. If meeting the babe can give some kid like that a reason to make it, well, then his bum from Balmer's done some good. Yeah, you know, growing up over a saloon, I got to thinking there was only one kind of person in the world, and that was bums. Used to be I couldn't go to sleep at night without hearing a brawl downstairs, hearing my daddy's voice throwing some bum out. Sometimes he used to wake me up at quitting time just to help him drag a drunk out. He'd pick him up by the shoulders and I'd pick him up by the ankles and then we'd, we'd slide poor son of a bitch out the gutter and leave him there. An emergency seaman come around. Well, we couldn't do anything then but just stand back and watch him tear up our place. I guess that's why my old man got so bitter. See, I never remember the guy having a good time. Or even uh, a good feeling about life. Got himself killed in a brawl. Just a dumb son of a bitch. Hey, you know I had a part in a movie? The starring role, The Babe Comes Home. I got the girl, but the check bounced. <laughs> I didn't care, I made up for it in Bogville. Christy Wallace set it up so I'd get 3,000 bucks a week to team up with a pro, Wellington Cross. The idea was we'd just go out on the stage, tell a few jokes, sing a few songs, have a good time. I mean, I know how to perform in front of 60,000 fans, but somehow being in front of three or 400 people without my back, I started to get a little nervous. I figured I might need some help. So I invited some of my Yankee buddies to sit in the front rows and, and just applaud at whatever happened. <laughs> well, <laughs> the music started, and then the curtain went up, and out I went, and before I could tell a joke or anything, and some bitches started laughing at me. <laughs> I figured I was overdoing it a little bit, and I looked down, and there's Long Bob Musil pointing right at my crotch. <laughs> I forgot to button up my fly. <laughs> loosen things up pretty good. <laughs> Even when it comes to singing up there, I, I, I got feeling pretty big for my britches. Of course, singing's always made me feel good, but, but getting paid for it made me feel even better. <laughs> the critics were a little stuffy, but I survived. Like one of them said, the audience seemed to enjoy Mr. Ruth's not-so-unpleasant voice. <laughs> There's a compliment in there somewhere. <laughs> Hell, yeah, Christy said it would work, and it did. Man has so many good ideas. He, he's got a way of working out deals so that there's something in it for everybody. So I let him handle all my outside business. I mean, when it comes to baseball, I figure a baseball player is worth every penny he can get. So I negotiate my own contract. I'm pretty good at it, too. There's a lot of things I like about having money. You know, I can help someone out of a jam. I can buy myself a new automobile or a piano. I can tip a porter more than you make in a month. But I can also run out of it. And that's where Christie comes in. Because I can trust the man. See, it isn't just it isn't just the money. Christy helps me out with the press. He will sit out there in the press box making up stories that the scribes can't check out. Like, say, I, I scratched my leg in the batter's box. He'll say, boys, that was the 23rd time the babe has scratched his right leg at home plate in the third inning in Yankee Stadium since it opened. And they'll print it. <laughs> they don't care if it's true. They just need stories. You just got to keep them on your side. One of the facts of life I learned about last year, 22 seasons. Oh. One I'll never go through again. You see, they had this dumb rule that kept World Series players from barnstorming, and I decided to ignore it. So the commissioner of baseball decided to suspend me and Bob Musil for 40 days. 
it cost me a bundle. And all hell broke loose because everyone wanted me reinstated. Everyone except Judge Landis. He said, no, I can't do that. We're playing a game called baseball, not a game called roof. I mean, barnstorm is great for baseball and everybody knows it. And the owners were losing the bundle too, but they decided they had to stand with the man they hired. Well, I needed a full season at bat to top the 59 homers I hit the year before. See, three seasons in a row I broke the home run record. And now to take this much time away from me, I didn't have a chance. I couldn't even go to the ballpark. There's a lot of other things I could do. So by the time I caught up with the Yankees, I was in pretty bad shape. And I was real mad. My attitude started affecting my play -in. I started having fights with my teammates. Then I had a fight with an umpire, and he threw me out of the game. And on the way out of the stadium, I chased a fan up in the stands. By the time I left, everyone in the place was booing me. I did set a record, though. Five suspensions in one season. <laughs> the press turned on me. Well, I'd always trusted those guys. See, I never thought they'd print the stuff that they... Like, Babe Ruth doesn't care about the fans. Or Babe Ruth, traitor to national pastime. One of them even went up and told my wife, Helen, some details about my nightlife. So I decided I'd hit them where it hurt, and I stopped giving them interviews. They'd come in here saying, what'd you think of the game today, babe? And I could say, why don't you go to hell? By the end of the season, there wasn't anyone talking to me. Except for Christy Walsh. And Christy wasn't saying who was right or who was wrong. He was just laying out the facts. He said, now, babe, don't forget the power of the press. They can make you and they can break you. Took you a long time to get where you are. Take you overnight to be back on the wharf. I mean, you scared the hell out of me. That was the first time I ever really thought about losing it all. But I knew he was right. So Christy arranges it that we'd have a little party and me and the press could mend our fences. Invited them to come on over and ask anything they wanted to ask. Told them don't hold back. Believe me, those bums needed no encouragement. But I handled it all. Right up until when, when State Senator Jimmy Walker got up. And he started to lecture me on how I was disappointing the dirty-faced kids of America. Well, I started blubbering and apologizing. and I promised everybody that I... Well, you see by tonight that I did get it back in control. It named me most valuable player this season. I'm proud of that, too. Of course, me and Helen are still having a hard time. I noticed some of you looked a little bit surprised when I said I had a wife. I forget it myself, too, sometimes. A lot of the time, Most of the time. I mean, New York is my home and the Yankees are my family. That's how I feel about it. I know it sounds bad, but I just can't do anything to change it. You know, sometimes I feel like I'm leading two goddamn lives. Baseball has got me, got me living like this. Out here in Sudbury, Massachusetts, I got a small town girl in a beautiful farm call it home plate. She wants me to stay there. You know, chop wood, sit by the fire, and, and be a father. But when I'm out on the road and there's fans meet the Pullman in every city we go to, like we as doughboys coming back from the war, you know, I ain't sitting in my room alone thinking of hell, and I'm out having a good time. So I'm on my way back up to the farm, and I can hardly wait to get there. 
just that after I've been there a few hours, I can hardly wait to get back to New York. Or even Cleveland. <laughs> I mean, when I met Helen, she was everything I wanted. I was just out of St. Mary's then. I, I was... I was a babe. And she was a waitress in the diner where I used to eat breakfast every morning when I was in Boston. I thought I was pretty hot stuff, you know, a rookie with the Red Sox. And I was the only baseball player she knew. Still, I, I, was, I was pretty shy with her. I used to keep ordering more breakfasts to get her to stand in front of me. She had the most beautiful eyes. And it, the smoothest skin. And a smile that would just, just hypnotize you. See, even when we got married, she didn't know nothing about me. It's just that I had a big appetite. <laughs> you know it's so much more now. Like the last time we were up there, we had another fight. About something the scribes had been saying. It was like most fights, you know, we weren't really listening to each other. He says, babe, you're not really working in our marriage. I said, what do you mean working in our marriage? I'm, a, I'm on the road half the time. A goddamn baseball player. Goddamn Sudbury doesn't have to have a Major League Baseball team in case you haven't noticed. No, you can't come on the road with me again. No, you can't go to New York either. Because, because, because you cramp my style! See, there's that one thing about being on top. You don't want to come down. Not for anybody. But I promised Christy Walsh I'd keep working at the marriage. Oh, Christy, sometimes he doesn't know when a thing is impossible. He says they're going to be, be pay, playing baseball at night, indoors. <laughs> he says someday they're going to pay baseball players a million dollars a season. I told him I'll take it. <laughs> Only 4 a.m. There's a lot of night left. Christy tells me someday there's going to be Cubans and Negroes playing in the major leagues. Well, that's half the people we barnstorm with, and some of those boys are pretty good. It's just that Christy never runs out of ideas, see. He's got me a syndicated baseball column and a bunch of people to write it for me. He's got barnstorming trips. He's got, he got my face and my name on cereal boxes, suspenders, mousetraps. Some of those people use your name, you know, and maybe send you a check. That's one place there ought to be a rule. I love wearing tuxedos. There is one fella. He tried to talk Christy Walsh into letting himself Babe Ruth underwear. <laughs> Where'd he plan to put my face? <laughs> he tossed it off. I wanted to know if I'd model this stuff for him. <laughs> Christy told him for a thousand bucks an hour, I might stand next to it. Can you imagine that? A grown man modeling underwear? <laughs> A baseball player? 